Hello! Hi! How you doing? Welcome right on back. The flowers. It's winter time, still. And literally everything is happening. Like that last episode, there was just so, 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 so much that happened. So much that happened and that the Sasaki sisters still just know nothing about, which is really still wild to me. But we had another, we, 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 we had another run in with Yuzuriha and she was just like, look, I'm gonna let y'all go. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna give y'all a free move after this because y'all smarted me. And I'm only doing this to get back at somebody else. So I don't know what our move is gonna be, but it's sure to be interesting. At least I hope, I hope they don't waste it. And I hope that they, <laughs> I really hope that they let the Sasaki's in on things at some point. That'd probably be, uh, that'd probably be really helpful. So let's just get right on back into it. Starting chapter six. Uh, I have to think we're starting to get close to the end here, but we will see. The air is warm as though teasing the arrival of spring. The sun's light is pale and gentle. It feels like spring, I murmur. Oh my god, it's really hot. Sorry about that. I had to turn on a fan. It was really hot. As I listen to the pleasant tinkle of tea being poured into a cup, I think to myself that spring can't come soon enough. I drank coffee today, which is not something that I normally do. And I was wired for at least six hours afterward. Well, I did so because I did not sleep well last night and I needed to get through the day. So I thought that the only solution would be let's drink a whole bunch of caffeine. And then I did not realize that it would wire me as hard as it did for six hours. How do these girls drink coffee at like 10 at night? As I listen to the pleasant tinkle of tea being poured into a cup, I think to myself that spring can't come soon enough. I feel like with the arrival of spring, everything will be better. I won't. I won't. I'll tell you right now. I don't want nothing to do with coffee after today. I'm glad that it was a Friday, the end of the week, so that, you know, the whole, I'm really crashing pretty hard right now. Like, I really shouldn't be trying to record videos while I'm coming down off of a caffeine high, but I just really had to get back to this story. Lowering her gaze from the peaceful blue sky, Erika-san lifts her own teacup and breathes in the scent. See, they're on a weekend too. Tomorrow, tomorrow morning will be the weekend morning for me. I may actually have some tea, though I don't know if it'll be Darjeeling. She adds a splash of milk to Erika-san's cup then gives it a quick stir with a spoon. The fragrance changes subtly. Erika-san takes a sip, comments about how good it is before immediately taking another sip. My META partner beams at the positive assessment. Ooh, mint. I do like a nice mint in a hot chocolate or a tea. Not too much. Ooh, menthol. I smile at the way Takasaki san glows under Rika san's compliment. It would be a regular Sunday scene if it weren't for the conversation.
The statue of the Virgin Mary stands atop a snake. Yeah, like that's come up a lot. She repeats the words from last night's confrontation with Yuzuriha Yatsushiro, so Yatsushiro and Nerine Komikado. And I... I don't know about that. I don't... Nah, I don't... I don't think they're in... I don't think that they're involved beyond... Like, like... like there's very clearly some kind of coordination now going on between Dahlia and Nerine and Yatsushiro and Yuzuriha. So, um, that's, that's all I've been able to put together. Like, I don't think they're the goddess of truth, though. I think, like, the goddess of truth has got to be either Chian Basquiat or, 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 or other girl. How did I? Oh, Sayori. I think the goddess of truth has to be one of those two. No, again, I don't think that they're, I don't think that they're that deep. I think that they're literally just here to be roadblocks. I think that like, they're gone from the academy at this point. Like they're done, they're done so. But like Dahlia has them on a leash of some sort. That's, that's kind of like all I can really think of at the moment is that the, like they're just here to be a roadblock, I think. Her brow furrows as she addresses the other two girls who are watching her over her own teacup, over their own teacups. They'd fulfilled their Yeah, they fulfilled their obligation Meaning I think that like They've been here this whole time To just be a roadblock for some reason And I would think that would be Dahlia For some reason I mean, I mean The some reason is obviously The name Shion Basquiat Keeps coming up and that obviously is a sore spot for her. Bingo, she says. She drains the rest of the tea, then asks Rika-san for a refill. Oh, you finally told them! Okay, but again, I have to ask. Why are the Sasakis not part of this conversation? Yes. He didn't come clean to everyone because I don't see two little fruit sisters here. And I still don't understand why the, why we're keeping them in the dark. Erika-san and the others put themselves in danger to help me. I couldn't let them think that their courage was wasted and the confrontation with the, other, with the older girls had been for nothing. So I told them that Although I wasn't able to find what I was looking for in Sister Bastiat's room, their actions had led me to being able to speak with Mayuri. So you're making this seem like it's the first time. It feels like the first time that we've fallen behind it. Anybody else like Finger Eleven? She trails off looking at me. I know what she's not saying. It's exactly what I've been doing. It's what it's what it's exactly what I've been doing my best not to think about. <laughs> Again, I love how earnest she is and how straightforward she is in her thinking. Scratching her head roughly, Erika-san tells her that's not at all the case. Okay. 
耕作は白羽と再会を果たしながら意味ありげな言葉を吐いて立ち去ったさてそいつはどういうことだマユリは自分の意思で真実の He went back to the goddess of truth of her own accord いや自分の意思ではなくおそらくは何らかの弱みを握られているからだろう自分の意思で戻るのなら鍵となる言葉を吐くわけがないからな。That is a good point. マユリは助けを求めている。Everyone catches their collective breath and turns to look at me. Perhaps as Erika-san is implying, マユリ just wants to be left alone, but. ごめんどくさい。Or how she confessed to me that she only had feelings for other girls. I can't spill those secrets of hers, not even to my friends who've done so much for me. And yeah, that's. I mean, yeah, she's not wrong. You can't out someone. But <laughs> it, literally everybody in this room knows that you two are a thing. And I think that literally everybody in this room. Knows that Erika and Chidori are a thing. Even if Suo may be. <laughs> even if Suo may be naive to the point of silliness, I think she knows that Erika and Chidori are a couple at this point. Oh, she's not happy about this. Erika's words tear up my heart, bringing forth a fresh and vivid pain. My eyes are swimming, making it hard to see her face clearly, but I feel her warm palm envelop my hand. Oh. oh, look at this adorable little buttercup. Ah, I love her so much. Her fingertips brush across the corners of my eyes, wiping away the gathering tears. Though my bl through my blurred vision, I see that she's smiling softly at me. Oh. <laughs> 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 They're both done! They're both sick! 
sick of it. Y'all stop being gay. Stop it right now. <laughs> That's some real good sprite usage there. <laughs> Just pulling the chair backwards. Oh, that's real good. Oh, that's real good. Oh. <laughs> Hold on. I laughed too hard. I missed that. Takasaki-san pulls Erika-san away from me and I feel a heat creep up my neck and stain my cheeks. So, did you talk about anything about Kousaka? Yatsuhiro-senpai said, eh, it's... ...the heavy on Something about a key. The words my Yuri spoke to me there at that space were cold, pain, and everything else seemed so far away. So there is something in Sister Basquiat's room, whether it's like the the pages from the almanac about the tulpa of agape or or like a literal key scratching at her temples she repeats the word key to herself erica san who so admires sister basquiat starts to say something but stops herself <laughs> I mean, we got one move. We get a free move here, and it's up to us to not screw it up. Takasaki-san nods. Both she and Rika-san seem eager to take action. Erika-san and I are comparatively subdued. Yeah, like if we've already searched the room, I don't know what good it's gonna do. Takasaki san quietly repeats that she did say she'd overlook it only this once, and silence descends over the room. For a while, we focus on drinking our tea and munching on almond cookies. The crunch of cookies melds with the occasional rattle of wind filling the room and the otherworldly echoes and the absence of fruit sisters. Otherworldly. Thinking back on that conversation with Mayuri in the previous, on the previous night, it suddenly occurs to me that Mayuri said the exact same thing as Yatsushiro-senpai. The statue of Mary stands atop a snake. Like, I... My brain, like, I don't... I don't know whether I need to, like, look up an actual statue of Mary to see if this is, like, something real or if this is just, like, something that's centric to this game. Curse me in my non-religious ways. I repeat the phrase and then Takasaki-san abruptly leaps to her feet with a rallying Well then, let's go! I mean, like, if the statue is just kind of there, we should at least go look. When she adds that she thinks it'll be a fun adventure, the tension etched across everyone's faces eases then. As Erika san points out, here at San Angreka Mission School, statues of Virgin Mary are, no disrespect intended, a dime a dozen. 
from the large stately monuments watching over us. Hey, Maria, Maria Samagami Teru. <laughs> from the large stately monuments watching over us to small figurines of varying shapes and sizes. We're particularly, we're practically tripping over them. However, Erika-san asks critically, and her Amitié partner, who's pushing her wheelchair, responds without missing a beat. Hey, speaking of Ichigo and Ringo, I have a really good idea about them. <laughs> I can't let this go! It's driving me nuts! Why have we not told them? I really don't understand! I'm hoping the game will make that make sense because I really don't understand why we're excluding them being this deep into the mystery at this point. They literally left like five minutes before we started going over this crap. And we've not seen them since. Who we have, we just decided to very, <laughs> to very clearly just not tell them about it. Boy, like, <laughs> again, this is like, like, this is something they've been involved with before. This is something they told you about. Why are they not here and why are we not letting them in on it at this point? Takasaki-san declares with confidence as we follow behind her along the snowy path. I recall meeting Rika-san and Mayuri on the, on the very same path walking toward the academy in the spring. <laughs> it's like right here on this path that you discovered girls for the first and second time. I think of my grandfather's advice. The tougher things get, the more you should smile. I force my facial muscles to contort into a smile, but I'm not sure it works. I probably just look like I'm having a stroke. My grandfather was... All right, what do we got? We come to a stop. We came to a stop earlier than I expected. I knew we'd have to cut through the forest, but... Yeah, that would <laughs> be kind of a bummer. Who's giving Erica a piggyback ride? Oh, all right. What do we got? Well, she's definitely standing on a snake. All righty. We make our way carefully along the snow covered track until the forest opens up abruptly before us, raising our eyes from our feet. We're greeted by the beautiful figure of the Virgin Mary. Lost for words, we simply stare in silence at the figure before us, its hands pressed together in graceful prayer. Surrounded by the dark of the forest and dusted with snow, the sublime image seems to have stopped, seems to have stepped straight out of a religious painting. Okay, well, who's coming out here all the way to take care of a Virgin Mary statue? The mundane observation brings everyone's attention back. We approach the statue of the Virgin Mary and stand to ins and, and start to inspect it. I mean, Dahlia, probably. Their words seem to go in one ear and out the other, flowing away into the forest. My eyes remain fixed on a single spot. Yep, the snake. 
My gaze doesn't break away from the snake Mayori spoke of. Okay, well, what does her standing on a snake have to do with anything? We all stared down at the snake beneath the Virgin Mary's feet. This is what Yatsushiro Senpai was warning us about. Spotting what looks like some kind of mark on the snake's head. What? I don't see a snake. Yeah, probably I'm not meant to see it right now. Spotting what looks like some kind of mark on the snake's head, I brush away the snow covering it. Numbers? Inside a star? What? What? Why is... What in the world? Why is this here? A symbol has been carved into the snake's head, a star, and inside the star, the number 23. She admits that she didn't really look. Mikasan peers fearfully over my shoulder. What in the world? Well, I hope somebody's got it figured out because this is not ringing any alarm bells for me at the moment. This is just kind of like, what? Running a finger over the snake's head, I pull, an op I I pull open a mental drawer and ask myself, what does this tell me? Ictus. Icky what? This is me every time a literary quote or a literary reference comes up when I've been playing this game. <laughs> Sorry for being uneducated, but what's that? Yeah, I'm gonna call ignorance on this stuff because I am I am so blind to most things religious that <laughs> I just I mean I just I just don't know. Maybe that makes me I mean I mean yeah it does make me ignorant, um, but I just I pay so little mind to uh, religious things that maybe even like if i'd have seen this before i would have known this <laughs> like if i'd have paid maybe a little more attention to religious concepts or stories i would have understood this oh okay oh that's the jesus fish yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I understand the concept. Yeah, the Jesus fish. You see them on you used to see them on cars all the time. No, that is definitely not a fish. This is the symbol of the goddess of truth or the tulpa of agape. The words tumble out of my lips and echo ominously through the forest, leaving a heavy silence in their wake. This has only reinforced my belief that, like Erika-san said, there's someone controlling Yatsushiro-senpai. I mean, if the goddess of truth is not Yatsushiro, it's not Yuzuriha, and it's not Nerine. Um, it's not 
Dahlia, but Dahlia is involved because Dahlia is manipulating Yatsushiro and, and, and Nirine, so... We don't know for certain that this symbol is an ictus. But there is a for but there is a force to Takasaki san's words. A faint outline of our enemy is beginning to form. Until they're visible, I don't need to concern myself with them. Once they've come into focus, I can be on the alert and come up with a strategy. But how am I supposed to deal with something as in as incorporeal as a ghost? I ask myself this as I gaze into the eyes of the snake. I seem to burn with hatred. 23. What? As my Amitia partner predicted, the unreasonably balmy weather lasts for, for no more than a day. Bitter winter comes swirling back in, bringing fresh snow to replace the drifts that melted under the briefly dazzling sunshine. Amid the falling snow, we search for we search for companions to the ictus-like symbol we found on the statue of the Virgin Mary. First, we decide to check the academy's other statues to determine whether that one, whether the one in the forest, is the only statue that bears such a mark. We inspect every single one we can find, from the small figurines in our rooms to the waist-high effigy in the gardens. After examining, after examining them with an almost neurotic thoroughness, we confirmed that only the statue in the woods is adorned with what it was, was adorned with what we are, for convenience's sake, calling an ictus. Up next is to find out whether an ictus can be found on any other images of the Virgin Mary. We theorize as to what the number 23 carved into the center of the star on the snake's head could mean. Perhaps the number identifies a follower of the goddess of truth. Perhaps putting together several such numbers reveals coordinates and so on and so forth. So we decide to look not only at statues of the Virgin Mary, but any and all religious paintings and sculptures. However, during rehearsal for the upcoming play, uh, for the upcoming play, I think back on the status updates I received from my friends the night before. Although we didn't find any more stars with numbers in them, we have discovered that stars are relatively a are a relatively common symbol. Accordingly, we found plenty of them on things without any religious significance. It seemed like good news when I first heard that there were lots of similar symbols popping up in our in our searches. But when I but when I heard from Takasaki-san that she came across a whole bunch in the library, what? I felt my spirit sag. Still, it must mean something that the only ictus can be found is the one on the statue of Mary out in the woods. I'd been puzzling over what to do if we ended up with several different numbers, perhaps multiply them together, but if we only have a single number, then we can consider it an isolation. That symbol and that number. Suddenly someone shakes my shoulder and I blink at them. Hey! How you doing, Ichigo? Hey, we should probably talk. It's been a while and there's like a whole bunch of stuff that it might benefit you to know and it might benefit us if you know that stuff because having extra brains working overtime probably a good idea flustered I look down at the script but I don't know where we're at looking up I see Ichigo-san and Ringo-san looking back at me from over their own scripts Along with Tuabu along with Tuabuki san, who is regarding me with narrowed eyes. Yeah, she hates us. Oh, 
She points to my line in the script and I quickly read it in my head before reciting it aloud. Any uh, dirty little girl appreciators out there in the audience? I appreciate. I, I'm I'm known to appreciate a dirty little girl every now and again. The twins are playing their parts of the evil step sisters uh, of the evil step sisters and Tsubuki san the stepmother. We're only reading out lines, but they put on an enthusiastic performance nonetheless. The twins are putting in their all. But I'm especially surprised by Tsuobuki san's impassioned delivery. She genuinely seems to resent. <laughs> Suo, I have. Uh... Do I have some news for you? As I say my line, I glance around the room at my classmates who are practicing their own parts. Others are discussing the costumes or painting the backdrops for the stage. We're mostly done with the costumes, props, and the set dressing, curtains, and other mechanisms for the show. The only thing we're missing is... I'm very sad that Tsuobuki does not like us because I think she's adorable and I want to know more about her. Ichiko-san shakes my shoulder for the second time and I look at the other girls as though gazing out at the world through an aquarium. I'm carrying an unbearable frustration. Like I'm just one step away from my goal, but it's still somehow out of reach. The reality that the play is right around the corner hasn't sunk in. I falter beneath her concerned gaze, and a gleam of suspicion appears in Ichigo-san's eyes as she questions me. Uh, her something is wrong with you, Dar, has just gone off, and she is about to read you like a book. She's going to do something to make you happy in the next probably one or two scenes, because that's, <laughs> that's kind of been her role for a while now. You've probably been up to a whole hell of a lot over the last, I don't know, three or four days that you probably haven't told me and my sister about, right? Everyone looks surprised and a little dismayed to see that I've invited- Oh, thank God! We're finally gonna do it, aren't we? We're finally gonna let him in? Are we finally going to let the twins in on what's going on? Jesus! I know why, but... Oh, thank God. Oh! I can stop fretting about it. I still don't know why it took this long to rope them into this. They were literally right there as we were about to start talking about it, but they left like 20 seconds before and nobody just opened the door to call out through the hall. Hey, come back. Something real important's going down. I made the decision after hearing what the twins had to say. Like, why would anybody fight it? More heads that are, like, gearing away at this is such a better idea than just us toiling away. <laughs> Erika-san warns the Sakis that it's going to be difficult for them to hear this, and they respond tensely. They're ready. 
They got this. Seriously, these two are solid as brick walls. You you couldn't have better people in your corner. And I, I, I think it's absolutely stupid that we've waited this long to pull them in. They are like they're children, but they're but they're just as much as children as you. Uh, so they're just as strong. They both smile at me. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's what friends are for. Waiting like a week and a half to tell probably two of the most important people throughout this story, you know, who've, who've, who've done a pretty damn good job of keeping everybody, you know, morally, like, you've kept everybody's morale up, you know. Finally letting them in on the situation feels like, you know, again, something we should have done quite a while ago. I still don't know why why we waited this long. This is... I'm gonna have to ask the author about this one. I'm gonna get on... I'm gonna get on my Google machine and I'm gonna ring up flowers at gmail.com. Hey, why did you wait so long to ring... <laughs> To rope the Sasakis into the final game's, you know, big climax. Why'd you wait so long? Why? They know I'm hiding something. And I know that I can't possibly refuse to talk to the first friends I ever made. And that's the thing that's driving me nuts. They were literally your first, the first people that were like, yo, we're friends. And you've literally kept them out in the cold this long. So yeah, it's real poopy, isn't it? Well, you got, you got Ichi in your name, too. It fits. Oh, dang. Everyone laughs at Rika, uh, as Rika-san protests loudly that she was actually the first. I address the twins as I take on my Amitie partner's role and pour them tea. Oh, thank God. <sighs> and so I do. I tell them, as I did Erika-san and Takasaki-san and then Rika-san, about everything that happened in the spring and everything that's gone on since then. About all the hurdles I faced seeking the reason behind Mayuri's sudden disappearance and how I overcame each of them and why I became the president of the Council of Nikaya, the Keys Shiambaskiat, and the Tulpa of Agape. My chance meeting with Mayuri. Then, how we ended up facing off against Yatsushiro Senpai and Komikado Senpai. At first, I thought about leaving out the parts about our upperclassmen. Yeah, I kind of understand why, but you know what, they're... They're strong enough at this point, like they, they can handle it. But faced with their earnest gazes as they listened intently to my story, I was hesitant to lie to them. Contrition towards the two of them standing there, silent as mice, wells up within me. I wonder whether it was too soon to tell them about Yatsushiro Sen, but they're fine. These girls are good, these girls are strong. However, I stare at their bowed heads, sure that I heard a low whisper from one of them. No. Oh. Okay, that's not a whisper, that's actually a scream. Oh, okay, she's... She's taking this a little more intensely than I thought she might. As the two of them start discussing what I've just told them, I find myself turning back to Rika-san in amazement. 
やチロ先輩とコミカド先輩のこと I mean, I'm sure it doesn't feel great, you know, that your former girlfriend is now an enemy, but. They glance at each other. I have no idea what emotion they're communicating, but. I mean, it, it makes sense why it would obviously, you know, like, I don't think that they're shaken to the core. I don't think that they're, you know. Like, oh God, I'm I'm ruined and I I can't understand. I, I think it's just more of like, oh, okay, uh, well that's something I gotta deal with. Uh I'd say something encouraging. Let's be upbeat about it. I'm sure they must be upset, even if they're not showing it. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> Ichigo's like, let's go! <laughs> Hearing their cheerful banter reassures me slightly. Erika-san pokes Rika-san in the ribs for her overly blunt question, and Rika-san hurriedly apologizes. The twins look at us awkwardly in the ensuing silence. Then, scratching her cheek, Ichiko-san speaks. <laughs> like I said, they're made of stronger stuff than you think. I mean, obviously, it's not the greatest thing to hear that your ex-girlfriend is now, you know, <laughs> some kind of roadblock or enemy, but... You know, they can take it. They've, they've calloused up a bit over the last couple seasons. That is a way of looking at it. They've broken bad. <laughs> They've broken bad. <laughs> I, I, I look I know that like the, the the phrase break bad has probably been a thing long before the show breaking bad but I've, I've never heard somebody actually use it in this con like in the actual context that you would use the phrase broken bad but she's not wrong like they've not really done anything they've just kind of shown up and acted kind of menacing. And again, it's not like, it's not like Yuzuriha threw Erika out of her wheelchair on purpose. That was one of those, hey, you grabbed me and I responded and then you fell out of your wheelchair. No, obviously she probably could have stopped and been like, hey, are you okay? But that, that, that obviously wouldn't keep up the anime villain, you know, thing they were going for uh, in the moment and are, you know, still going for it, basically. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, the lump on Erica's head says otherwise. 
Yeah, I think that could have been way meaner if they wanted to put a stop to everything that's going on right now. I think they could have been way more direct, way more blunt, and probably gotten physical and gotten away with it. What Ichigo-san saying makes sense. If they really wanted to play dirty, there are plenty of ways they could have done so. Although it seems an overly optimistic assessment, their words give the rest of us hope. How wonderful it would be to know that they aren't working against us. They're a fearsome duo. Well, I mean, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, Nerine hasn't really done anything. Uh, we just kind of, we've barbed her a few times and then, you know, Yuzuriha kind of got mad about it. But, uh, Yuzuriha is a formidable opponent. Like, I'll give her that. They're a fearsome duo. I don't want them as my enemies. Thank freaking God. But you literally should have asked us sooner. <laughs> Crime! I meant it strictly in the professional sense! <laughs> Seeing Erika-san flush faintly warms my heart. Watching everyone chatter together, I feel a sincere gladness that I came to the academy. Is there anything that stands out to you about the keys Shirahane's picked up during her search? Do you got some information on the number 23, perhaps? Or the Virgin Mary standing on a snake? なかなか今までの敬意を話したのが誠意ってやつもあるだろうが、多角的な視点を欲しいからってのもあるんだよ。お前たち双子はどくとくなものの見方をするからな。もしかして、ファイトカンプメント。褒められているんですよ、一度
Yeah, I like that a lot. All right. Surrounded by the silent specimens, I think of those lines from the movie The Bucket List. That is a movie I have not seen, actually. How heartwarming it is to have friends who care for me and measure themselves by me. Damp, cold air pools in the darkened specimen room. But I don't feel the faintest shiver. Erika-san asks the twins after they've finished reading the letters from the specimen jars. Ichiko-san turns dazed eyes to her while Ringo-san looks thoughtful. Yeah, it's a pretty sad story, unfortunately. The rest of us feel the same way. We all looked over the letters again, too, and I felt the same gloom reading them again that I felt the first time. What you got, Ringo? She prefaces her observation by saying that she herself is generally of the same opinion. Then... We put the letters down on a table and gather around her. Okay. With that, she holds the specimen jar out to me, just thinking back on the raw emotion of that letter oozing with the pain and sadness of losing her Amitie makes my eyes prickle hotly. She indicates the lines. Of course, I should have faced up to her. I should have apologized and made things right. But because of my own willful stubbornness, my amitié is gone and I will never see her again. Rest in peace, my beloved Xion. The scrawled closing lines speak of her deeply held regret. I silently reread the lines then look up at Ringo-san. She points at the hastily scribbled words. Wait. If anyone should read this letter, I ask this of you. Take the flowers from Shion Basquiat's grave. I had no right to lay them there. That was... Did we just not, not notice that the first time? I don't remember. We all noticed this part. We did? Maybe I just don't remember. It's been a couple of days. We've all noticed this part before, but never discussed it. It seems the final... It, it seems like a final castigation. Sayori berating herself for her sins. Right. Yeah, but I mean, that's you. Not everybody is gonna think like you, obviously. Unless we're, like, assuming that... Hmm. Ichiko-san nods. Oh. I bet you would. Ichiko-san puffs her chest out proudly. And I get a feeling. As soon as I get their words tucked away into a drawer inside my brain, the vague silhouette lingering my, in my mind sharpens into focus. That shadow that's always just been out of reach. Laying flowers on Xian Basquiat's grave and taking them away, Sayori wanted... Thank 
Did we really keep these two out of the picture this long? So we could have this moment of them unlocking this moment for Suo right now. Did we really do that? Because again, this whole time I've really felt that it made no sense of why we did not involve them sooner. And now I feel like we're involving them at a time when it's just really convenient to do it. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but I I feel weird about that. I stare intently into Erika-san's eyes as though trying to extract something from her face. Then I close my eyes, listening to the sound of the snow outside falling against the window. We're missing one last key that will tie the pieces together. In the darkness behind my eyelids, Xian Basquiat smiles softly at me, while Sayori Kifune reaches out a hand imploringly. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and call things there for now because I'm starting to actually kind of get tired. It's been a really long day. As you can see, it's like a little after nine o'clock and it's been a long week. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna stop things there for now. I guess mostly I'm just glad we're finally, you know, pulling two very important characters into the plot in a way that I feel they should have been involved with for a while. I feel like they literally waited. They kept them out of the loop this whole time just to have this moment where they would kind of be the ones to kind of point Suo in a direction. And I feel a certain way about that, maybe a little bit. Feels a, just a, maybe a smidge contrived, let's say. But that's going to do it for now. As always, thank you so much for stopping by. I always appreciate you lending me a moment of your time that we can spend together. And I hope you have a nice rest of your whatever, wherever it is that you are. And we will catch you. That's right, you next time.